Welcome to episode 2 of my Titanic series. So I've been getting some constructive criticism, which is very good. And so now, I'm going to make this series like 10 times better. So this episode should be a lot better than the last time. I'm going to add more context, stuff like that. So um, thanks for watching and let's get into it. Today we're going to be talking about the Orlop deck, which was the second lowest deck that you could go to on the Titanic. So yeah, let's get into it. Just like last episode, we will be covering it from the bow to the stern, so right to left. In the Orlop deck, the bow was mostly full of cargo, meaning that's where they stored the cars, luggage for passengers, mostly first class luggage, because if you were in third class, you probably were not the most wealthy person, so you didn't have much stuff to carry. So the luggage was mostly just made up of first and second class because they actually had the money to afford that kind of stuff. Also on the Orlop deck was the bunker hatches, which means that's the place that um, they could access the coal bunkers from. So if you really needed to get coal, then you just open these hatches and start shoveling it out and bringing it down to the boiler rooms. Um, this deck also contained the m mail room, pictured here, where that's where they um, sorted all the mail, because Titanic was the RMS Titanic, and the RMS stand for Royal Mail Ship. So, of course, they had to have a place to st store mail and sort it and stuff, so that was the, that's what that was. Also in the bow was the number one hatch. So, if you ever see a picture of Titanic's bow, then you'll see that there's like a little canvas cover thing. And if you take that off, it's a long drop down, all the way down to the Orlop deck, where most of the cargo was. And a crane could be used to um, descend heavy objects down to the lower decks so that it would be much easier to store them. I'll show you a picture of the bow right now. and That's the uh, number one hatch, the one that you see with the canvas covering. I'll try and make a um, circle around it. But also, up on the bow, was the species rooms and the parcel rooms. And that's pretty much it for the bow section of the ship. Then, of course, since they since the rooms each took up two stories, the boiler rooms, there's number six boiler room, number five, number four, number three, and number two. And also number one, which is a lot smaller. This takes us back to the reciprocating engines. They also took up about half of the space. They also took up two floors, I mean, I'm sorry. That's why they were also featured in the last episode. And I will show a picture of them now. Alright, these are the turbine engines. I'll show a picture. Um, those, um, I explained it in the last video, but essentially they were powered and they made the um, propellers spin so that it was pushed forward. Next, behind that, were lots and lots of refrigerators. Not the kind you see today, but like the kind you'd see in a large restaurant. That's where... They stored them, like, like, meats and stuff, things like that, th things that needed to be cooled. Here they also had groceries, mineral waters for the first class passengers mostly, um, just some empty rooms, called empties, and bulk storage, pretty much. They also had the number 5 hatch here, which is essentially the same thing as the number 1 hatch, just an area for cranes to lift and drop things down to the lower decks. And then they have the number 6 hatch and the peak tank. The peak tanks are basically things that sh are in ships, and they fill with water, and basically it makes it so the ship doesn't lean towards the bow or the stern. Um, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for today. Um, on the Orlop deck. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I put enough detail into this one. Please, please criticize me and tell me like what I need to do to make it better. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later. They pretty much stayed dry until the ship broke in two, and the stern went under. But 
the boiler rooms and the cargo hold is what we'll be talking about today. And also the mail room. So, during the sinking of the ship, the mail room was one of the first, like, major inhabited rooms to start flooding, other than the boilers. So, the mail, the guys who worked in the mail hold, they did their best to transport over 200 bags of mail up to the post office, which was on G deck. Unfortunately, the ship was flooding too quickly for them to get all of them, all the mail up to the de other deck, so most of the mail was lost, and no mail has been recovered from the ship. And all the men who tried to rescue the mail, they all died in the freezing water. None of them made it to a lifeboat, unfortunately. During the sinking, the first and second class baggage area also flooded, and it lost, it destroyed, and ruined all of the luggage in there. It was a mess. Also, the number one hatch f started flooding, and if you went to the top and poked a hole in the canvas and look looked all the way down, you'd see water. So that's interesting. But the boiler room is, was where a true tragedy happened. Because in the boiler rooms, it was full of men called firemen. And when the ships hit the iceberg and started flooding, they were all in there because most of them had to work for most of the day. Either you got the night shift or the day shift, and you got sometimes a few days off. But basically, it started flooding, and was, many men were saved from drowning in the boiler rooms themselves because of the valiant efforts of the leading firemen. But number six, number five, so wait, let me get this straight. I do believe that the number six and the number five and a little bit in the number four boiler rooms were starting to flood. And unfortunately, not many firemen made it out of these boilers. The other boilers flooded whenever the water spilled over the watertight bulkheads and filled up the rooms. But fortunately, there was little to no people in there for it to kill and drown. So that's all right. In the further back, like I said, none of it really got wet until the ships broke in two and water started to flood into the lower decks in the stern. So, ooh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Also, one more thing to note is the bow part that flooded when the ship struck the ocean floor. It mostly just got completely crushed. And same with the, um, what's it called, the stern, because it imploded whenever it was sinking because of the compressed air. So most of the items in the stern were destroyed. Um, yeah, okay, this is the official end of the video. Thank you for watching, and look out for part three, which is G-Deck. Thank you.